obesity has been increasing rapidly over the last few decades, and it's gotten a great deal of attention for that um, increasing recognition of the of the um, of very high rates around among children and adolescents, and seem to be getting just higher. Uh, a quarter to a third of children and adolescents are now affected by obesity and at risk for, for uh, overweight. And we know that this is already having a negative effects on their health now as children and, and, and uh, as they age into adulthood, we expect um, much more serious ramifications on their health from diabetes and uh, joint problems to increased risk for cancer and heart disease all the way through the lifespan. Um, we expect to see a, a worse uh, a worsening of their health. Uh, well, many people have heard of anorexia nervosa, and that's often what people think of when they hear eating disorders. But in, but in fact, eating disorders are, are much more varied than that and actually much more common than most people realize. Um, in addition to anorexia nervosa, um, there's uh, bulimia nervosa and also binge eating disorder where uh, people may overeat in a, with a sense of feeling out of control, um, which can have uh, uh, very negative effects on their weight over time. Um, the um, eating disorders of the most extreme kind that we may see reported in the media um, affect a smaller proportion of the, of the American population. But from a public health perspective, what we're especially concerned about uh, is also um, uh, all the, the adolescents and, and um, uh, adults with eating disorder symptoms that may not be as extreme as we see in the media, but in fact can be having negative effects on their health and can escalate and lead them down the road to developing a more serious eating disorder. The, the, the kind of extreme and extremely unhealthy weight control behaviors that we see teenagers starting to, to take on are to control their weight. They're worried about their weight and um, they are resorting to these extremely unhealthful methods in order to do that. Um, what we want uh, as uh, public health folks, as people, people who work with children, clinicians who work with children, teachers and parents, of course, uh, what we want is for people to find healthful ways to relate to food, to relate to physical activity, to relate to their bodies, and, and uh, keep their weight at a, a healthy level, but only through the healthful methods. Uh, what we don't want is children to feel so desperate that they have to resort to these extremely unhealthful methods to try to, to uh, manage their weight. What we were interested in, in looking at is whether an overweight prevention program for middle school age children could also have a beneficial effect for the children on eating disorder symptoms. Could it help protect them from resorting to the extremely uh, unhealthful ways of controlling their weight? Uh, the, um, our original work on this uh, was done with a study called Planet Health. Uh, Planet Health was carried out about a decade ago in middle schools in Massachusetts, and what we found in the original study was that the Planet Health intervention cut the girls' risk in half over two years of developing extremely unhealthy weight control methods. The, the Planet Health curriculum is a program designed for schools to promote healthful nutrition, healthful physical activity, and to reduce TV viewing. Uh, it's a program that's designed to be compatible with the school's academic goals, so the curriculum infuses across the school and in, in all the different academic uh, classrooms and also in health classes and physical activity. So there are lesson plans that fit well into um, English, social studies, math, for instance, so that it can be um, uh, easier for schools, more practical for schools to be able to, to carry out the, the program. The 521GO program is based on the Planet Health curriculum, and the, the message carried through the program are to eat five fruits and vegetables a day, to get no more of two hours of TV viewing a day, and to get at least one hour of physical activity, so the 521 and go, because we want kids to get up and go and be physically active, turn off the TV. The 521GO program was carried out in 13 middle schools in Massachusetts, led by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health in partnership with the Harvard School of Public Health Prevention Research Center. When uh, this study was carried out, we wanted to build on our prior work to understand the effect on eating disorder symptoms. So could we replicate? the protective effect for girls on eating disorder symptoms with this new larger study and more recently carried out 
521GO program. We were very pleased to find that 521GO did replicate our previous findings. 521GO was able to reduce girls' risk of developing